Hello and welcome to Epitome Video Training. In this session we're going to be discussing integrating the PBX onto the install network. By default, the PBX is shipped with a static IP address of 192.168.1.249. In some instances you will be installing the PBX on a 192.168.1 network. If this is the case, verify with the IT department that the 1.249 address is both outside of the DHCP pool as well as not being used as a static IP address. If all of those things are, are true, then you can simply install the PBX onto the network, put 192.168.1.249 forward slash IPPBX into your browser, log in, and continue along with the rest of your install. Unfortunately, in many cases, you will not be installing the PBX on such a simple network or a common network scheme. In those cases, you're going to have to set the PBX up to be able to communicate not only on the network itself, but also to communicate with devices that are on the network, phones, gateways, etc., PCs for call manager. In these cases, there's two methods to change the IP of the PBX. The first would be to connect a monitor and keyboard to the PBX. Once this is done, you can press Alt F7. This is going to bring up a page that allows you to set your static IP address, your subnet mask, your gateway, your DNS. Once all those values are set, some of them you may have to correspond with the ISP or the IT department for the end user site. But once those are set, you'll be able to press S on the page and that will save and update all the values and make them live in the PBX. Once that is done, you can connect the PBX to the network, connect your PC, type in the IP address that you had set it to statically, once again always ensuring that the static IP address is both not being used and outside of the DHCP pool. You would put in the IP address you, you selected, forward slash IPPBX, and it would bring you to a login screen like you see here. The other method for doing this, in terms of changing the IP address of the network, would be to create a very simple, bare-bones network. This would involve a switch standing all by itself, not connected to their network, your PC connected to the switch, and the PBX connected to that same switch. Once you do this, you will be you will need to log into your PC and set yourself a static IP address of 192.168.1.250. Once that's all set up, you would put in 192.168.1.249 forward slash IPPBX in your browser, and again that would bring you to this login screen. By default, the username for the PBX is pbxadmin, and the password is epitome, I-P-I-T-O-M-Y. All of these are lowercase. Once you've logged into the PBX, since your goal at this venture is to set the IP address and gateway of the PBX to communicate on the install network, you'll go under System Networking. And as you can see here, you can set all the values. IP address is a static IP on their local net outside of their DHCP pool that's not being used as a static IP. Typically, your subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0, meaning you can talk to all addresses in the 192.168.1. range. Your gateway is going to be set to, typically, the router's IP address. And then we advise you do set up all three static DNS. Typically the first one is also going to be the same as the router. It's going to be your default gateway. The router is typically going to handle DNS relay for you. But also make sure you set static DNS too. Typically I would advise for you to find out from the ISP or just simply look in the router and find out what a public IP address the, the ISP gives you for DNS. Enter that as DNS too. And then as a third precaution or a redundancy for DNS, I would put in 8.8.8.8 for static DNS3. This is Google's DNS. What this is going to ensure is you have three options for the PBX to try every time it tries to go out to a domain ser name server, for example, if it was going out to check time. 
this is going to make sure that it has every opportunity to make it out to the time server appropriately. That way you don't lose any functionality in the PBX. Once all these values are set, you would click Save Changes. Step one of integrating the PBX to the customer install network is now completed. You would probably now have to connect the PBX to their network, set your PC back to DHCP, connect it to their network, and then log in with whatever static IP address you set for the PBX followed by forward slash IPPBX. That again would bring you to the login screen and you'd log into the PBX. After logging in, you would go down to PBX Setup SIP. By default, the local net is 192.168.1.0 slash with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, meaning every address from 192.168.1.1 through 192.168.1.254 is permitted to talk to the PBX. That's how this PBX is set up. But if your install, for say, had a 10.1.10 network, you would have to enter in a local net of 10.1. 10.0, the last octet is typically a 0, and a subnet mask just the same. 255, 255, 255, meaning that everything from 10.1.10.1 through 10.1.10.254 is permitted to talk to the PBX. They're considered local devices. And then the last thing on this page we would configure is the external IP. Uh, this is used for remote phones and remote SIP providers. It will be the static public IP address of the site where the PBX is located. Uh, you may have to ask the IT department or the ISP what that value is. Alternatively, you could type in whatismyip.com and that site is, for the most part, going to give you back the right address. Uh, about the only time I could see where it wouldn't is if you were using PC that are on a different network than the phones and the PBX are going to be on and therefore you'd be going at a different gateway so that particular IP address might not be accurate. Probably best to check with the ISP or someone on site who knows what the, that address is going to be. Once you've got all your values configured here as you need to, click Save Changes. Now you're two-thirds of the way done. We have the last step here, which is going up to System, Access Control. Now the Access Control list is a security feature that will define what addresses are even permitted to speak to the PBX and by setting these up you are making the PBX as secure as possible. Uh, what we advise is to click this nice button here load recommended defaults and what it's going to do is build five services based off of the local net we just set up under PBX setup SIP. So we have our SIP service, our call manager service, local manager service, TFTP service, and XMPP service. Now all of these are built by default with allow lists. They're called an allow list because they will drop all traffic unless it comes from these IP ranges. This would be the loopback, meaning the PBX is permitted to talk with itself. This is the address that we just added as a local net, and this was the default address. Since this is an installed demo PBX on a 192.168.1.0 network, I'm leaving that address and local net there. Typically for your install, if, you had, if your network is on the 10.1.10.0, you wouldn't need this address at all. We would have deleted it from the local net on the last step. But that's what we have here. We have five rules telling the PBX you're allowed to communicate to any of the local addresses and anything outside of this local network you are not permitted to communicate to. Unfortunately, that wouldn't work too well for remote phones. So what you would do is come down to Add New Rule, set the service type to SIP, and in this field you would take your remote site's public IP address. I'm going to make one up here. This is nothing in reality. And you always will want to put a forward slash 32. The forward slash 32 means only speak to the exact address which we entered here of 4520.12.20. You would not be able to speak the PBX would not be able to speak to 45, 20, 12, 21. Click Create Rule, and then you see it moves up here. So you can, at a glance, tell what address ranges are permitted to communicate over SIP to the PBX. And once you're done with that, you would click Apply Changes, and your PBX is now, in a most, in a basic sense, ready to continue on with the rest of your install. Uh, you may have already done the programming inside of the PBX while it was on your test bench. So at this point probably all you would need to do is install your phones, 
um, install your trunks, do a little bit of testing, verify that everything functions the way you expect and the way the end user desires, and you're ready to go. So we'll see you in the next video presentation.